Hello, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build your own AI-powered language translator using JavaScript, LangChain, and a local AI model running with Olama. It will be a very simple program if you are not an experienced developer or if you have never touched an AI library before. Don't worry, I got you covered. The cool part is that all runs locally on your machine with Olama. No API keys needed, no rate limits, no privacy problems, just fast, private and powerful translations on your machine. If you're not familiar with Olama, it's a program that you can very simply install uh, and it runs, as I said, locally on your machine. You can list all the models installed. Uh, we are going to use Llama 3.2 which is a very small model, which produces very fast results, even on my local machine. And you will be surprised how well it can translate between a lot of different languages, even though it's so small. Okay, let's kick things off uh, with creating our new project. First of all, let's create a file, uh, translator.js, let's throw that up and let's install the necessary modules. I'm going to install LangChain Core, uh, which gives us basic LangChain support, but then you also have to add the module of the large language model or rather of the engine that you want to use. In my case, this is Olama. If you want to use OpenAI, you would have to uh, use OpenAI or, or if you want to use Gemini, Claude, Mistral, whatever, you would have to uh, install whatever you need. In my case, it's Olama. In our translate file, let's make this a little bit uh, bigger. Let's just import chat Olama from Langchain Olama and let's just instantiate our large language model object here. It will be a new chat or lemma. And I want to discuss two parameters with you. The first would be the model parameter. I'm going to use Llama 3.2 here. Um, and the second parameter is the temperature. Now, if you are not familiar with that, um, a temperature defines how creative the answers of your large language models should be. A temperature of zero means less creativity, temperature of one means maximum creativity. What I mean by that is if you prompt your large language model with the same text over and over again, would you get the same results, like less creative results, or would you get different results? In most cases, it's a trial and error thing to do. Um, I'm going to go with a temperature of 0.3 to allow a little bit of creativity, but not too much because we want to have reproducible results. Let's start very, very simplistic. Uh, let's just write our prompt, translate the following text to English. Um, Hello, heute ist ein guter Tag, which means hello, today is a good day in German. Now to get our result, let's just invoke our LLM. Oops, invoke with the prompt and let's lock the result. So let's fire that up, translate. What we see here are some problems. So first of all, um, we're getting a warning because we're using the import syntax, although uh, we have not specified our program to be a module. So let's fix that in our package JSON. And the second thing is we're getting back a promise here because obviously this is an async call because it takes a couple of seconds in order to get anything back here um, so we have to await the call let's try that again now we see it's not just a string that we get back it's a whole object with a lot of metadata and the actual answer we're interested in is uh, found in the content field of the result so let's just output the content and here we go so the translation of this given German sentence is, hello, today's a good day, here's a breakdown and some explanations and so on and so forth. 
there's two things left that we want to do. <laughs> First of all, I want our program to translate different texts and I want also the user to be able to specify the target language. So the target language should be the first parameter, English, for example, and the text to be translated should be the second parameter. Um, so let's, uh, instead of hard code the prompt here, let's write a function, get prompt, function get prompt, and let's just extract the target language and the text from the process arguments and uh, then the text to be translated is argv of three and prompt that we return let's use string interpolation here should be you are a translator translate the following text into target language and text to be translated. All right, let's try that out. Oh. Sorry about that. Let's not use the exclamation mark. All right, let's fire this up a couple of times. You see, we still get a little bit of noise here. We, we get some explanation and the result is not the same every time as you see here. Um, this is because our temperature is greater than zero. Anyways, we want just a translation and not all these kinds of explanations. Because imagine you're writing a program that just needs to translate your application text or your documents. You don't want any explanations from your large language model. So I can give you some prompt engineering tips here. The first one is be more specific with the task. So we could add something like, do not explain anything, do not comment, just provide the translated text. Actually, let's put that after the target language. It, it seems more logical to me. And the second thing you can do is to provide examples. This is almost always a good idea. Let's try that again. Hello, today's a good day. So let's play around a little bit with different languages. Uh, let's see if we can translate into Italian. Ciao, oggi e buongiorno. Sorry for my pronunciation here. If any, any of you are Italians, I'm really, really sorry. And then let's translate it back to English from Italian. Hi, today is a good day. I think that works pretty well. Let's try to be a little bit more creative here. Um, I want to try something that even Google Translate cannot translate for you, uh, which will be Sindarian text. Now Sindarian, in case you don't know, it's uh, one of the Elvish languages in Lord of the Rings. Let's see. Oops, we have to a problem here because we used the exclamation mark. Let's not use that. Why is our large language model capable of doing that? Well, because it found the text in the internet and it got trained with it. Pretty cool, right? So be creative, play around with the temperature, play around with different models, uh, play around with uh, uh, different platforms, use OpenAI, use Gemini, whatever. This is how you easily can add AI power into your applications. And there you have it. You've just built a simple but powerful translator using JavaScript and AI running entirely on your machine. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more AI dev content, and let me know in the comments if you're interested in any more topics uh, regarding AI. We've just scratched the surface. There's a lot more to talk about. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.